Welcome to Theatre and Tonic, where I am joined by Rob Hochin to chat about South Pacific. Hi, Rob. Welcome. Hello. Can you start by introducing yourself and talking about a little bit about your journey up to this point? Um, Yeah, so I basically I went to GSA, Guildford School of Acting. I went there when I was 18. Uh, before that I kind of didn't really do much theatre if I'm honest until I was about 16. Um, I was I guess I sang around the house and stuff but it was only when my friend asked me to do this after um, sick form kind of thing uh, after hours like an extracurricular thing that I, I sang in front of people and they said you really should do this as a you know at least an amateur dramatics kind of vibe so I did and I really loved it and then two years later I was away um in Guildford and I trained there for three years and then I went on to do like a a touring thing in Germany this like um great show it's just like 12 of us guys singing and then when I was away in Germany I got lame hairs so I'm settled there for a few years Mm. and then um yeah and then after that just hoped and prayed that I'd get some good auditions and I've done a few things since and here I am yeah, I mean, to be fair, obviously, a lot of people may know you for things like Lamy. So what is it like to go into a show where, you know, you've kind of had that reputation in that one show? So how do you kind of move, remove yourself from that into something new? Um, it's quite difficult, I will admit. There was always this, I was told you're going to get this Marius curse. And I was like, oh, what does that mean? And they were like, well, it's kind of a, a certain role that I guess you're right for at the time because of the way you look and the way you sing which is this legit, we call it, way of singing, um, whilst looking kind of young, especially young at that point, because they've kind of gone young with casting since the movie. And and so I was like, okay. And when I left, they were kind of right, if I'm honest. It's quite hard. There's not that many... There wasn't that many legit shows about that had like the the need for a young guy singing that way. Um, so I had to kind of show them I could sing in a different way too and perform in a different way. And and I still feel like today I'm, I'm, I'm you know making sure that people know and realize that I can do other things and I want to show other sides to myself. So it, it took a little while. I did Titanic, which is kind of a similar vibe, but it was Eugenius that really changed things. It was when I did that, that I sang in a different way and I performed in a different way and people were like, Oh, okay. Like you can do it. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta show the people so they know. Yeah. And I mean, obviously in comparison to something like Eugenius, like South Pacific is kind of like a more traditional classic musical. Yeah. So, how has it been to kind of go into the, the reputation that like you know South Pacific has because obviously it is such a traditional musical isn't it yeah it's um it's there's so many people in the audience who have just loved the original like since it was brought out and have come to see it and 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 love our version too because Daniel and Anne have really kept this kind of authenticity of the original version and um and like reinvented it in a way that stays true to the piece but also makes it available to audiences today and I think that that's what makes it great for for me being a part of it is that I can go in not in a way like I'm stylizing myself in like this um old like uh traditional kind of performance kind of way I could I went in it as if it was a new musical and um and I've never done a Rodgers and Hammerstein and so I was like just amazed by how these lyrics are so relevant and how um wonderful the writing is and I always knew it was but when you really dig deep and you just realize that the book and the lyrics and the songs are just written so well it's genius and so there's a lot to play with and um yeah especially with my role and and being a young guy that goes through what he goes through and the journey he has I feel like it was uh more than I had hoped for in terms of things to work on and grab hold of yeah so can you talk a little bit more then about your role in South Pacific yeah, so I play um, Joe Cable, a lieutenant who comes uh, to the islands of Vanuatu to kind of, he's been told that what he needs to do is find uh, someone, a specific man who's been told that is on the island called Emile de Beck. And um, he used to have a plantation on Marie Louise, another island. And he said that this guy can help him with his mission, which is to like go over behind enemy lines and like spot ships as they pass down a certain area and um relay the information so they can be knocked off so kind of like spy i guess and um and so he's come on this island and he he's on a mission to get his mission happening and um and so while i'm on the island i meet liat um 
well, I don't. I go into Bally High and I meet Liat. Um, Bloody Mary introduces me to her and we fall in love. So it complicates things a bit. And um, and it's just what ensues with that. Yeah. I mean, it is a really fantastic musical, isn't it? So have you kind of really yeah. enjoyed getting to grips with this style of musical? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I like I was saying before, I love the fact that I can get the chance to do different things and like sing pop one minute and sing contemporary music another minute and then sing this like another minute. It's uh, I'm blessed to say that I've been given that opportunity. So it's really nice to have gone back to this side of my voice and just like like have a bit of legit. But then, you know, not not classical, not opera, you know, like Julian, Julian sways more in that direction. And then, you know, it's it's like it's just nice. I feel like there's a lot of amazing singers in this show and we all have our own unique thing about the way we sing as well so it just kind of makes every the color of it really great and do you think a show like this will appeal to new audiences because I think a lot of like traction at the moment is towards like new musicals and new writers so do mm. you feel like South Pacific still has a place where it can invite new audiences in yeah it's a good question because I think nowadays it's hard to sell classic musicals um, unless you maybe revamp them uh, in a way that's so dramatic that maybe people are curious to see what you've done or they make a uh, a kind of uh, an impact in that way um, but I just think our show has done so brilliantly and it's been created so brilliantly and it's still so relevant that it would be silly for young audiences not to come and see it because they think it's like outdated um, the morals in the story can be harsh to hear and and um, some of the lines are like really you know they're quite uh, scary when you hear them said out loud but it still doesn't mean that one in that era they were um, happening and, and two they still kind of happen today so it's 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 still so relevant that I think it's it's like um, great for, to see young people in our audience. I mean, it's not something we always have. And I get that they want to see new musical theatre that's pushing things forward too. But I think revisiting old classics, the genius of like shows like this is something we have to do. We have to maintain classic musical theatre. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, to move forward. Because it's the foundation. Yeah, it's the foundation of like what the new stuff is built on. And, um, and yeah, as long as we obviously approach doing it in a in a sensitive way and in an intelligent way then yeah yeah absolutely and what has been your favorite part of like performing in South Pacific do you have like a favorite part in the show um I have to say that the the new Younger Than Springtime which I sing with Leah we the new like kind of choreography I'll do I'll do that I'm doing those little rabbit fingers those inverted commas the choreography of that is um is really great I mean it's um it's not like I'm doing anything crazy I'm not I'm not going to sign up for Matthew Bourne just yet but I am I am loving loving just um what we've created and we found it together with Sarah she's just so fantastic and just so like generous to me and we found this kind of like language between us um that we created in the rehearsal room with this extra music that theo jameson put in so and it all just ties in really well it's just a beautiful moment and it's lit really well i've, I've seen the pictures and i'm like oh that actually looks really nice <laughs> so you know that swings in my favor and how like i know this is quite a personal question um but how kind of do you manage your mental health and kind of your physical health during like this show because obviously you're touring so how are you managing yeah. that no, it's a very good question. I um, I think it's tough. This schedule is really tough. We have a, um, we get to the venue on Tuesday. We like look at how we're going to put it in and how we're going to have to change things. And then we have to do a show that night, two Wednesday, two Thursday, one Friday, two Saturday. So we do eight shows in five days, and then we have you know at least the Sunday to travel on the Monday off, or you know the month the Sunday to have off and the Monday travel is it's it varies people do what they want to do and as long as you get to the next venue on time it's great um but it does take a toll you have to make sure you don't you know wear your voice away go out all the time because when you're on tour you want to see the city and you want to like explore and you know have a drink and let off some steam but you have to also think I've got so many shows and I've you know I've got to be up and ready for next week you know like so and if you do go back to London, I find that can tie you out as well. So you've got to decide like what's good for you. But mentally, I think that it's also, it's really bonding for the whole company. It's really great to be there together and to share with each other. You know, sometimes you're like, okay, 
I'm tired this week or this isn't working for me this week or can can someone just bear with me because my voice is tired or I don't know I'm not feeling great and we've got like great company manager and, and stage manager and great people in the cast to talk to and that is so important to feel like you can talk to someone because you're out on your own you're not back home do you know what I mean mm. so and you're staying in someone else's house or like a hotel or something and you're just like you need someone to talk to so and I've got my dressing room buddy Dougie he like we we put the world to rights every day the worlds <laughs> as if there's more than one well, it probably is. <laughs> you never know um so for people who are kind of being intrigued about south pacific what can they expect from this show um from this show you can expect a, like a reinvented classic so it's like uh, like i was saying this the show the writing itself is genius like um the way i uncover new things about it every time I move to a new venue and try something else out. I realise, oh, this line could actually be done this way. Oh, they may, may have meant this, you know. So I think you can come expecting the classic musical, but with, you know, elements of reinvention that will highlight things you may not have seen before and also, you know, show you how relevant it is to today, as well as, like, it being sung amazingly by, like, Joe and Julian and Gina and the yeah. ensemble. Oh, yeah. it's amazing, isn't it? And I think as well, it's it's got big classic like dance numbers in it, is hasn't it? It's got the iconic music in there that I think will yeah. get people towards it, won't it? Hmm. Definitely. So, Nothing like a dame and stuff like that, and Bloody Mary, which is my favourite, which I never really knew before, but I love that song. Absolutely. So, for people who are interested in coming to see South Pacific what would you kind of like? Where would you want them to come and watch you perform? um wow that is a good question I think what have we got left so we're going to Cardiff um and then we've got Nottingham because I'm watching you in Nottingham Nottingham next week oh yeah of course but I didn't but I was just thinking about after we've got Edinburgh and Canterbury we've got Edinburgh Leeds and Canterbury so um, well I think we should come to Nottingham because Nottingham is within reach and it's also, I've heard a beautiful city because Dougie has told me because he went to university there. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I've got lovely digs. I can't wait. Um, yeah, so come to, come to Canterbury if you're from London, you know, they're nearby. But I also have been to Cardiff before and the Millennium Centre is gorgeous. And Edinburgh, I have to say, is one of my favourite cities. It's a gorgeous place. I mean, it's going to be cold, but yeah. <laughs> So I guess I basically just chose every venue except for Leeds and I've got nothing <laughs> against Leeds. I've just never been. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Leeds, you've got something to live up to, essentially. Yeah, come on, Leeds. Show me what you got. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Rob, to chat about South Pacific. No worries at all. Thank you so much.